Hello and welcome to Tech Talk. I'm Joy McKnight, Technology Editor at The Banker, and I'm here today with Dr. James Smith, CEO of Elliptic, a London-based blockchain intelligence firm. Thank you so much for joining us today, James. Can you tell us a little bit about Elliptic and what it does and who your clients are? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, Elliptic identifies suspicious activity in the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, so Bitcoin is a, a digital currency and Bitcoin has got a reputation, rightly or wrongly, for some element of suspicious activity or criminal activity. Uh, so what we do is we, we identify links between a certain transaction and uh, criminal activity, whether that's drug marketplaces or firearms marketplaces, whether it's somebody trying to launder money. Uh, and we do that for two groups of customers. So we provide a service to companies who process a lot of transactions, such as Bitcoin exchanges or payment processors. For them, we're helping them satisfy their anti-money laundering regulations uh, by monitoring transactions and flagging up high-risk ones. And we also work with law enforcement agencies to help them build a case around something they're investigating that involves Bitcoin. So it's very interesting. I think, you know, 2015, you saw blockchain really take off. Maybe Bitcoin didn't have as much fanfare as it had before. You know, uh, what is the global take-up at the moment of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? Yeah, I think that's a, a fair assessment. So a, towards the end of 2013 and into 2014, the price of Bitcoin was skyrocketing. And that, that helped build a lot of hype around it. Uh, I think it was overhyped. And, and people were predicting this very quick adoption, which we haven't seen subsequently. So 2014 was a year of, of massive hype, uh, and the, the price has never reached those same heights again. That said, in the past year, we've seen, with the media attention taken away, we've actually seen some pretty steady growth within the industry. So now more than a billion dollars worth of venture capital money has been invested into companies who are building infrastructure. Uh, so the space is becoming much more uh, resilient. Um, but also in the past year, we've seen a steady rise again in the price of Bitcoin itself, with it, uh, I think, nearly doubling in the past year. In addition to that, was, there's a lot more trust now in exchanges and other platforms due to licensing and regulation that's coming in. Uh, so I think 2016 is going to be a pretty exciting year for Bitcoin. So can you talk a little bit about the regulation and what's happening on that front? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it varies a little bit around the world. Uh, the majority of the regulator focus has been in the US and in Europe. Uh, and, and so there's two parts of the regulation. There's the, the money laundering side of regulation and then there's the prudential regulation. Uh, so. In the US, uh, FinCEN put out guidance uh, as early as 2013 um, around the, the money laundering side of things. So exchanges in the US need to comply with anti-money laundering regulation. Um, there's then been state-by-state -state, um, approaches to some of the, the prudential regulation with New York, uh, what the New York Department of Financial Services uh, taking the biggest step, and they produced a a bit license, they call it, which um, puts certain controls in place around custodians and uh, other entities like that, uh, and also adds a bit on the, the anti-money laundering side. Um, in, the, in Europe, there is um, there's nothing really yet on the, the prudential side of things, uh, other than in Luxembourg, where there's been there's one company who's been licensed under the Payment Services Directive. Um, the there is work going on to uh, to cover Bitcoin and and companies who are involved in digital currencies under the the fourth AML Directive. Mm -hmm. So we expect to see that implemented in Europe, and the UK is actually making steps to to get there ahead of that directive. So would you say there's some kind of harmonisation? worldwide or we haven't quite reached that level yet? Not, we're not quite at that level yet. So regulators keep an eye on what each other are doing um, and, and it's starting to look similar-ish. Uh, but there's still a way to go in terms of it being completely harmonized. 
Okay. And you've just completed a successful $5 million um, Series A funding round. Mm. What are your plans for next year? Uh, so, yeah, that's a great step forward for us. And we, the round brought uh, a few key people to the table for us. One, uh, an investment firm called Paladin, who are uh, very focused on um, companies who have a commercial use and a security use. So particularly for us, when we have this sort of commercial side and working with law enforcement agencies, they're a great fit for us there. Um, but then also, interestingly, uh, Santander came into the round. Um, and, and they're interested in the, the strategic implications of this as we, as we move forward. So with, uh, with some great partners around the table now, uh, we are, we're building the products we currently have over the next year. So, so building up the client base in terms of anti-money laundering uh, software, but also with the law enforcement agencies. And it's a, it's a young but quickly growing space. We see Bitcoin having a great year. Uh, and, and the number of clients increasing over that period. Um, but then beyond that, we'll be looking at what are the other applications of this sort of technology. Okay, great. Thanks so much, James. Thanks for having me.